Hi everybody and welcome back to The Reef Life with myself, Dutch Reefer. Um, in today's video I will be showing you some things I changed uh, to the tank in the last week, in the past few days. Uh, I have been uh, cleaning up the tank a bit, doing big maintenance in order to uh, do a review of the uh, Red Sea Reefer 425 G2. Um, but I haven't done that yet, so I'll probably do that in the coming week, uh, or maybe next weekend. Uh, but in the meantime, I've been doing uh, some changes just to uh, to get the tank tidied up for when I will do uh, the video review. Um, and I'll take my time for that, since obviously I want to uh, give as, uh, as good a review as possible, uh, mentioning both the, the good things and the bad things. Uh, but all in all, I think Red Sea has done a, a good job uh, improving the uh, the reefer over the uh, the first generation. Um, well, I haven't been too shy about sharing my opinion about that. Uh, then again, the G1 was a bit of a dumpster fire. Uh, so, uh, well, a lot of things to improve, and uh, I will be getting uh, into that in the next video. So for today's video, I want to show you the things that I've uh, changed and uh, tell you about the things that I've tidied up and still have to tidy up in order to do uh, the review itself. Uh, but in the meantime, I've tried to uh, make the tank look more like a reef instead of uh, just a couple of uh, frags here and there spread around the tank. So I have gotten uh, a couple of new corals that I will be showing you in this, in this video. And um, yeah, overall, I'm just very happy that the tank is finally uh, turning into a real reef. Uh, of course, it's always a bit of a challenge when you first build a new reef. Uh, it will take some time for the corals uh, and the rocks to uh, well to look like a natural reef. The rocks were a bit new, of course, when I set up this tank uh, half a year ago, seven months ago. And uh, yeah, it takes some time for them to get covered in a bit of algae and a bit of coralline algae. Uh, well, and yeah, in order to uh, to look like a actual proper reef tank instead of just a couple of rocks with a couple of corals glued to it. Of course, this tank is still just six months old, so uh, it will take uh, quite a lot of time to uh, to, develop, to develop further. Uh, but yeah, that's always uh, the way it goes. Uh, you try to build something new, and uh, in the end, it starts looking like uh, like a proper reef. So first thing that I've tidied up is that I had a uh, frag rock uh, right here on the sand, uh, and I've uh, decided to get rid of that. Uh, I uh, did trade some uh, some of my frags that I had on there and the other ones I glued uh, onto uh, the reef. Uh, so for example, uh, this Blasto Musa that's right here beneath this uh, Solarius. Uh, that one, um, beautiful by the way, that the Solarius is finally showing up in one of my videos. So that's uh, something that I can really appreciate. I hope you can as well. This fish doesn't show itself a lot. It's usually hidden somewhere in one of the uh, PVC tubes uh, that's actually hosting the uh, uh, the ribbon eel, uh, but it's nice to uh, well to see it going around nipping on the rocks, and uh, yeah, I hope you can appreciate this as much as I do, uh, since this uh, well this fish, it's uh, they're known to be a bit of a dwellers in in crevices and dark spaces. As you can see, it's now returning to its to its lair. Uh, right here, uh, if you look closely, you can see it behind the copper band there. Um, so yeah, glad I got to film that for you guys and of course for myself. But back to the uh, to the video. Um, so this Blastomusa that had been uh, on my frag rack, it had uh, actually it used to be a bigger coral. Then it uh, kind of died in my previous tank. There were two heads left, and these are actually recovering pretty nicely. Uh, then these uh, Rhodactis right here, the green one, uh, this one, that uh, was also on the frag rack, and then these two uh, Discosoma, I think, or even Rhodactis, that are right here, the blue with a bit of orange, uh, they were also on the frag rack, and uh, with them gone, I was finally able to remove that, and, uh, well, to make the sand just look a bit more natural, um, also, it's good for the uh, the new ras that I've shown you last week, the Halichures iridis, um, to uh, because it sleeps in the sand. It's always good to have a proper space available for this fish uh, to dive in whenever it feels like it needs to uh, dive in. Uh, not yet, though. It's about uh, half past uh, six, and I still have to feed the fish, 
so they're anxiously waiting for me to drop a bit of mices and krill into the tank. So other than getting rid of the frags, I also did a big maintenance run yesterday. I replaced 60 liters of the water in the tank. And uh, by doing that, I cleaned up the, uh, the substrate. So I just use a hose to hose off uh, the dirty substrate and then uh, return it when I uh, clean it with a bit of old tank water. And then, uh, yeah, it all looks a bit more tidy, uh, tidied up. So that also helps the, the bottom of the tank uh, looks a bit more white now. That's what I like about sand. Uh, I've had some people ask me sometimes uh, would you run a uh, bare bottom tank and I'm actually not a big fan of uh, bare bottom tanks. There are a couple of nice ones out there but they're just not for me. I uh, like to uh, see my reef as natural as uh, well as possible of course since it's still very artificial what we try to keep in our uh, in our living rooms or in our homes or in our offices. Um, but then again, I uh, yeah, I really like the contrast of the white sand uh, against the uh, the colorful uh, corals that are inside here. So two other pieces of coral that I got are uh, these uh, this this torch, which is a uh, well, it, I don't think it's gold, but it looks a bit yellow-ish um, with a bit of a hint of green in as well. Uh, but it, I think it's an Indo torch. And then behind that is a small piece of. Uh, of uh, hammer coral uh, that I got from a uh, fellow reefer and I think they look uh, nice together so the little frag of the green uh, the green euphilia that I have right here um, somehow it fragged uh, when I moved tanks I think a small piece broke off and it's nice here together with the uh, with the other two uh, together and also this piece of Caulastrea Furcata, I think, if I'm correct, maybe not. Um, is this uh, this one I also got from a uh, from a fellow reefer, um, which I think uh, looks nice next to this one. They might turn into the same coral in the end, but uh, uh, it's nice to have a bit more than just the one or two heads that I had uh, left from my uh, from my old tank. Also, a small piece of Hypnophora. Uh, somehow, the Hypnophora has always done pretty bad in my tanks. I'm not sure why. Uh, but I'm trying uh, again with this piece and hopefully this one will survive. I've had some moderate success with them in the short run but then somehow in the long run they always uh, tended to uh, to die. Not sure why uh, but yeah that's uh, that's the way it goes. Also uh, it's uh, fun to see that the uh, the rock uh, anemone has actually returned somewhat to the rocks so it was last week it was a bit more to the left on the sand uh, but I think it has decided that it's uh, it likes the uh, a little bit less uh, flowy area that's close to the rocks. So it has uh, actually returned and moved uh, like a three, four, five centimeters back uh, to the right, and uh, now it's back uh, there and looks as it's as if it's part of the reef again. Also funny to see is that this frag of Zoanthus is actually uh, growing very rapidly. I was already warned about that. Uh, that these are very fast growers uh, and now the ribbon eel has to uh, has to show its head uh, well uh, actually uh, so, well the the, the, the zoanthus are covering up the entrance of the uh, the PVC pipe and the uh, ribbon eel has to poke its head through the zoanthus in, able, in order to uh, uh, well, to get out there uh, but I think it nicely covers up the entrance so all in all I'm very happy that this is here and of course if it's totally blocking uh, the entrance then I can remove uh, some uh, with a uh, with a knife um, so yeah a couple of corals left um, some SPS frags um, moderate success with SPS as well um, Stilophora always a nice uh, blue uh, coral but I think I had this last week as well um, or maybe not then this green Pocilopora uh, which I really like uh, for the bright green color and there's a small piece of hystrix right there behind that bird's nest coral uh, but that's still a very small frag that needs to uh, branch out uh, over the next few months and uh, I think this looks really nice in a trio uh, just some SPS growing on top of the reef uh, where it belongs and that's uh, that's always nice and then on to the last two new corals 
Uh, you might recognize this, uh, the one on the right, the Raja Rampage Chalice. I did have that before. If you look at my Christmas disaster video, then you'll see that it actually had, uh, had died, uh, unfortunately, uh, over Christmas. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's sometimes uh, the way it goes. Um, I hope that this one will survive in the long run and will actually grow out to be somewhat like like this. Uh, I had success with this coral at this spot, so I thought let's just put it close to there, uh, so it simulates about the same uh, uh, well the same conditions that uh, the bigger chalice is in, uh, a little bit lower. So it gets a little bit less par, but it's just, well, it's a couple of centimeters, so it wouldn't matter much. And this piece of uh, Calastrea as well, trumpet coral. Um, this is one is nice and bright yellow. That's the way I like them. Uh, so other than the other one that I showed you earlier, these uh, bright yellow ones are also uh, on my favorite list. Uh, they just look uh, amazing under, uh, under blue lights and also under daylights, as you can see. And I think that's uh, that's the roundup uh, for today of the new corals in the tank and the tank maintenance that I've done uh, over the weekend. Um, I hope you uh, you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, uh, we're already at 11 minutes, so I mean, think I'm going to end the video now. Uh, if you haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe. And uh, as always, have a nice week ahead of you, and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Feel free to leave a comment and I'll see you back. Bye bye.